guys, this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time we're going to be looking into the second episode of the third season of The Muppet Show, which includes Leo Sayer. Now for those of you who don't know who Leo Sayer is, he is a big singer during the 70s and 80s, and he has actually performed some pretty popular songs at the time. Some of these include The Show Must Go On, no, not the Queen version, uh, this is kind of like a predecessor, like a different Show Must Go On. Uh, there is also You Make Me Feel Like Dancing, and also When I Need You. Uh, coincidentally enough, these are all the songs in which he has also performed in The Muppet Show. But I think the best way to describe Leo Sayer is that he would most likely be me if I ever decide to go and have a music career, or like just have a singing career in general. Because not only does he have like the big poofy hair like I do when my hair is at its poofiest, uh, but also, like, he has a very high-pitched tone whenever he's singing. Like, if you listen to make You Make Me Feel Like Dancing, like, the, the voice that he has in there, like, it, it goes really high-pitched. Like, even more than I would whenever I would do, like, my reviews. Like, uh, like the way he sings is like, You make me feel like dancing. I want to dance it out of way. You make me feel like dancing. Oh! You know, it's not easy, but, like, that's the way he pretty much sings. And going into the episode that he was in, now, this is one that really does prominently show a story. But the one thing that I do find interesting is that this is all meant to fully introduce a character, but it was pretty much released a little bit later, because the funny thing is that the whole purpose of this episode is to prominently introduce Annie Sue. Now, uh, Annie Sue was featured in the first episode, but she was mostly there for just one gag uh, at the cafeteria, and that's pretty much it. So, when you see this episode, you would pretty much assume that this is one of the episodes that they premiered, uh, like, right when the season would start, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, this was actually released a little bit later. This was, like, uh, in terms of when the, the episode was actually released, this was... Uh, out like two episodes after the first one that they made with Chris Christopherson and Rita Coolidge. It's just um, why they had to place it a little bit later in the season when the whole purpose is meant to introduce Annie Sue, that I don't know, but you can actually do tell that this was like, I, I think originally this was supposed to be meant to be one of the earlier episodes of season three considering that like not only the whole point is to introduce Annie Sue, but also uh, there, there's no cafeteria scene. We don't go into the cafeteria. We haven't been fully introduced to Gladys. Um, but oddly enough, like, they did make a full introdu introduction to the cafeteria and Gladys onto episode one. So, they did pretty much make a, a pretty good job there. But, uh, what I'm pretty much trying to say with this is that it is a little bit unusual that they put it later in the season, like, when they were airing it on TV, rather than actually putting it up before. But, uh, I digress. Now, going, actually going into the episode itself, uh, with the full introduction of Annie Sue, um, it really does show, like, it, it pretty much prominently displays, uh, like, who Annie Sue is and her relationship she would have with Miss Piggy, because basically the whole character, like, maybe I might have already said it in, uh, the first episode of Season 3 in The Muppet Show, but... Like, the whole point with Annie Sue is that she's supposed to be the new star of The Muppet Show. Like, she was pretty much the new, uh, like, the new starlet. This is, like, uh, being in stardom and being in show business is completely fresh for her. And pretty much, like, she's the new thing that everybody adores. While Miss Piggy feels like the old veteran that, uh, pretty much feels like she's a bit in competition. Not just in terms of show business, but also her relationship with Kermit, where, like, she, like, pretty much her biggest fear is pretty much if Kermit actually would go for Annie Sue more so than Miss Piggy. Now, the thing is, is that, as you can probably tell, Annie Sue never really caught on, and, um, like, uh, the thing is, is that with, with her entire character, you could tell that she is really a normal-esque kind of character where, like, she's mostly cute, she's mostly new, and, it's like, she's the one that, like, everybody loves except for, like, the one who's more of a prominent main character that we already know. 
So that that would pretty much explain like like in a way it's an old trope per se like it, it, you know it is a, a nice introduction you know it, it does give a bit of a new twist to the Muppet Show and it does um, like if anything it really does build up a lot of Miss Piggy's characters so if anything she's more made for material to give to Miss Piggy but like I do understand that nowadays they don't really like like in the current Muppet phase they don't really use Annie Sue as much as they would uh, with uh, like Miss Piggy or any of the other characters. So yeah, in a way, like as a character herself, she's not necessarily the best in the Muppet Show, but like for for like the material that she would give to Miss Piggy, like if anything, at least she's useful for that. Is to you know, is to really explore the character of Miss Piggy. And, uh, that's pretty much the whole point with the episode, because, um, like, they really want her to be a prominent character, down to the point that she actually appeared in many of the sketches, not just in backstage, but also in some of the, uh, main, like, also in some of the musical numbers. Like, uh, she start, like, she would go out on stage and she would do a solo piece singing, uh, you piece, uh, you put a piece of carbon paper under your heart, and then she would also appear on stage again, uh, helping Fozzie Bear out with her, uh, with his act. Uh, so, like, like, everything about it, this is all for Annie Sue. Like, this is to show, like, this is the new Muppet that we have, and this is Annie Sue. If if anything, it's not a bad like it's not a bad episode per se, but it's not necessarily an episode. This is like the full lawn introduction of Annie Sue. But uh, it, like Annie Sue is not the only thing in this episode. Of course, there are some other segments. Uh, like going through some of the other stuff that they have. Um, like uh, let's see, what are what are the other stuff that like other like I'll, I'll save the special guest for a little bit later, but. Um, Oh wow, there's only, okay, so apparently there's only one thing that's not related to anything with Annie Sue in this episode, and that's actually a sketch with, well, actually a, a little old-time musical number with Gonzo, where he would sing with a bunch of birds, uh, she was a dear little dicky bird, so, uh, like, that was, like, I guess, if anything, that's pretty much our little break from the whole Annie Sue story that we got going on. But going into Le uh, Leo Sayer, and like I previously stated, uh, like, his, like his most popular songs are pretty much done in here. And uh, I will admit, like they are pretty well done, I will say. Uh, but not like I wouldn't say they're the best performed. Like they're not the most standout thing uh, from like the Muppet Show. But like you know, they are pretty good for what they're supposed to be, like acting kind of like musical numbers. Uh, the first one, of course, is You Make Me Feel Like Dancing. And I will admit, it is kind of weird because, like, uh, the back, like, the background dancers is supposed to be, like, a whole bunch of birds, but instead of, like, actually having Muppet birds, like, they did have that one crazy Muppet, like, one big crazy Muppet bird. Like, that one is fine, but the other ones, it's, like, it, it, it's a bunch of people wearing, like, these fancy suit and dresses, but they only have these, like, like they're not Muppet like they're not Muppet heads they're like realistic bird heads and like it, it kind of has this uncanny valley going on you know you know it, it's kind of like one of those like like when you're entering into those ballroom scenes and like you know something's not right and like you see this going on I, I don't know it's just like the background dancers I just feel like they're totally weird and then like you got the last one is when I need you where um, pretty much Leo saying Leo Sayer is pretty much singing on top of a tree and uh, like he would be singing it with other woodland creatures and like I will admit that you can tell that some of the other Muppets are trying to do some comedic bits but the, the only problem is actually Leo Sayer himself because he's not really interacting as much he's just like so focused on trying to sing his song so I, I, I don't know like he could sing but like, can he sing and act at the same time? Maybe not. The dude might not be a multitasker. But I would say the best musical number that he actually did was actually The Show Must Go On. Where, like, he would be singing back, like, he's pretty much singing on a, like, this is a set that's, like, not ready. It's like, you can see the, a bunch of boxes everywhere. 
where like um you know like this is pretty much like if there's like uh the set if there's no backdrop or anything like that and he would just be singing it with uh animal and uh uh there's this got like another muppet on the banjo so it's pretty it's not as complex it's not like uh, massively prepped up, like, he's not on a massively prepped up set, like in, uh, When I Need You or You Make Me Feel Like Dancing, but it def like, the simplicity of it, I feel like it really works in here, uh, and honestly, I think that's what I really do admire the most on that bit, is the simplicity, they don't have to do something big to display the music, uh, like, the musical number that they're trying to do. Just a little thing, add a few Muppets, and you're pretty much good to go. So, overall, I would say, with the, like I said before, this is not necessarily an episode, but this is more meant to be made as a full-on, um, like, like, this is meant to be a full-on introduction to Annie Sue. Like, this is pretty much to present her character, what's gonna be her purpose, and uh, how she's pretty much gonna roll with all the other Muppets. So this, like this episode, is pretty much all about her. Now, of course, you do get a little bit of a break with uh, the special guest star with Leo Sayre just doing what he does best. So, like basically, you do have a little bit of the best of Leo Sayre in this uh, episode. So, like it, it is actually pretty nice. So my biggest recommendation with this episode, like try to make sure that. Maybe this could be the first, like, if you're pretty much going to be marathoning uh, The Muppet Show, when you enter upon Season 3, I recommend this is, this actually should be the first episode that you should check out of Season 3, so that now, like, you could pretty much get a full-on introduction of who Annie Sue is, and you'll pretty much be good to go from there, so... Like, honestly, the like the order that you should do is that you should start with Leo Sayer, then go immediately to Chris Christopherson and Rita, Mo uh, Rita Moleno. Is that her name? Rita Moleno? Uh, Rita Cool. Whoops. Where the fridge did I get Rita Moleno? I mean, uh, Rita Coolidge. And uh, you should pretty much be good for, like, the re like, and then, like, you, you should pretty much be good for there. So, yeah, the whole point is this is the big introduction to Annie Sue. So anyways, that is pretty much it for this episode of the Muppet Vlog, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And now that we are all familiar with the new characters like Gladys and Annie Sue, uh, let's see how else we can go and um, uh, how we're going to explore more of Season 3. So until next time, see you later dudes!